All right, that was the first prelude, uh, stepping back and looking into the black box of Bayesian analysis at least a little bit. Now, um, another general topic that I want to cover that has to do with uh, DSM for the case where you have trends. So not a flat development, but something that goes up over time or down over time. I, I found it useful to start with uh, what we know about that kind of analysis from the past. Uh, for instance, when we talked about growth modeling here in the past in M+. Plus. So I'm going to get into an introduction to longitudinal analysis because that, I think that will help us to hang our newfound knowledge onto things that we really know very well and just remind ourselves about some basic concepts because it can get very confusing later down the line in the, uh, later after the coffee in the afternoon. And then I'm going to get into the guts of the analysis. Okay, so here we go. Prelude number two, methods for longitudinal data. We're going to distinguish between non-intensive longitudinal data, that is the growth modeling uh, type of data that we're used to. Uh, you want to have perhaps three or four time points. Sometimes you have up to ten. But number of time points, T, is usually very small, and N is very large large number of people, and examples of that is autoregressive cross-lag modeling, which uh, Ellen talked about in the uh, dynamic setting, and growth modeling. Intensive longitudinal data, T is much larger, 30 to 200 and very much higher than that in many cases, physiological measurements of which I know some of you have very interesting ones, like very closely spaced uh, <coughs> glucose measurements for type 8 diabetes situations. Or, as we will hear this af no, tomorrow afternoon, uh, household energy consumption measured very often. So we're going to have very large T, whereas N is going to be smallish relative to non-intensive longitudinal data. Um, but we have seen studies where you have quite sizable samples as well. Often the number of time points is greater than N, and the modeling, we shall see what you have already seen here through what Ellen, whoa, Ellen talked about. So one common method is the uh, autoregressive modeling that Ellen talked about, that is uh, Y2 is influenced by Y1, Y3 by Y2, this is the lag one autoregressive for one variable. And then the cross-lag modeling for two variables, like smoking urge and negative affect. Does negative affect irritations uh, at time one influence smoking urge at time two, for instance, and is there a reverse relationship on top of the autoregressive relationships for the same variable? We're going to, uh, here are some references for that that are quite uh, new and interesting by somebody called Hamaker and others in the Journal of Consulting Clinical Psych and in Child Development. All of them use uh, M+, plus, so you will feel familiar when you read those. But I'm going to focus on this instead. The growth modeling uh, is what moves us closer to the trend modeling that we're going to do in the DSEM framework. So we start with looking at the data, and as often, it's most important uh, as a statistician, I think, to start with the data for the individual, and that is look at uh, each individual separately. Here we have time on the x-axis. In this case, it's actually grades, but we have, don't have to worry about that. And you have outcome uh, y on the y-axis. And you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 subjects, 10 individuals. And you see their development over time. They start at a little bit different uh, levels already at the first time point. You have variation here. And you have variation in how quickly they grow. This person doesn't grow at all. This person grows uh, nicely and linearly. These, these people grow very quickly. So you have variation uh, in the uh, starting point, initial value, and in the uh, growth rate over time. In fact, you could actually estimate these curves or estimate uh, a, a regression model here, y regressed on time. So this is the x value. You could do that for each person. 
you know, you have more data points, in this case five, than say the two or three in linear regression. Perhaps you could even do quadratic regression. So for each individual you could fit a curve over time. Why do I keep emphasizing that? Well, I want to remind you that time is really a within person value, val variable, and growth, the development over time, is really a within level process. In this case, we don't do it as between within, we do it, I uh, show the picture here, in a wide format instead of the long format. So we have the wide format single level approach as opposed to the long format two level approach that Ellen talked about and that we will shortly get to. So the variation in starting point is represented by a random effect, what we usually call a growth factor, the initial status factor. And the growth rate is S, the slope varying across time. Uh, the rate with which they uh, grow over time is, is, is uh, determined by the coefficients on these uh, paths. This looks like a confirmatory factor analysis model, and it is. Typically, you fix all of these parameters, all the loadings are fixed. But nevertheless, this model often uh, fits rather well. So you have variation across time here and variation across people here, and you can describe the variation. Uh, for instance, if this is math development, you could describe it by the family SCS, which tends to increase the initial value and tends to increase the, uh, the slope over time. Now you can add time varying covariates like this as well, uh, something that varies across uh, the five time points in this case. So why is regular growth modeling not sufficient for intensive longitudinal data? And I, it helped me to think of two problems. And uh, it says correlation between time points is not fully explained by the growth factors. Let's go back here and take a look at that. If you look at slide 26, not only do these I and S latent variables or random effects variables uh, vary across individuals, they also explain why the outcomes correlate across time. The so-called intra-class correlation. These variables correlate across time because they're influenced by the same variables. Okay, so we describe correlation between time points. And what we're saying now, two slides later, Correlation between time points is not fully explained by growth factors alone because with ILD, ILD data we have very closely spaced measurements. So you need to add an autocorrelation on top of the correlation that the growth factors or random effects uh, explain. And the second problem is that the time series with ILD data are way too long for uh, using the regular uh, machinery for analysis that we use for growth modeling causing too slow com computations. Now you can solve problem number one by adding to the correlation that is explained by INS, you add the correlations between the residual across time. So here I've drawn a little circle for the residual. It is a latent variable, but we don't pay much attention to it. So we give it a smaller circle than these. But you could do this order regression. The residual at time two is uh, influenced by the residual at time one plus a residual on the residual. This is uh, doing it in a single level wide format. We have an example in the user's guide, example 6.17, that shows how to do this order regression among the residuals. Uh, the approach gets a little cumbersome with large t though, so it's not really a total uh, uh, solution to problem one. Problem one being the correlation between time points that we need to do well on. Uh, this is a, uh, an, a wide analysis, I want to repeat, and that means that Y has five columns in the data. Of course, solving number problem number two, we are familiar with how to do that. We switch from single level wide format to two level long format, and Y ends up as only one column in the data. So we don't have, when we have 100 time points, we don't have 100 columns, we have just one. And we regress Y on time, and this is a within level uh, regression. This is a two level analysis, you have within and between. You regress on time, which is the variable, and that regression have, has a random intercept and a random slope. The same I and S that we talked about. Those filled circles become open circles, namely continuous latent variables, on between 
that are then regressed on the between level variable W, the background of the family. So these, these uh, quantities vary across subjects and here we consider the variation across time, the dynamic part as Ellen talked about. 